super valid topic, uh, early decision to take, what kind of technology to build your uh, IoT value chain upon. So, welcome Jonas. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, so uh, my name is Jonas Karlsson and I work uh, at Telnor uh, IoT. I'll just try to find the right picture here. So uh, I work at uh, Telnor IoT as a product manager. And part of my work is to look at different network technologies uh, and see how we can enable them to our customers. And today I'm going to talk about two of them. Uh, it's LTM and uh, narrowband IoT. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what they have in common, how they differ, and what you should think about when you are selecting between those two. So first off, of what is LTM and narrowband IoT? So both these technologies, they fit into what we are calling low power, wide area network type of technologies. So these are devices that uh, do not need much data speed. So they, they are low throughput, but they do need really low power consumption. If they are battery driven, they need to have long, uh, low power. And also they need coverage in a wide area. It's not a local installation. I think you saw this picture uh, at Marty's presentation before, uh, but what I would like to say with this is that we have used the different Gs, 2G, 3G, etc., for, for uh, IoT scenarios, machine to machine, telemetrics. Uh, but now with LTM and our brand IoT, and also with the other 5G technologies, we for once now, we have technologies that are specified and designed for IoT scenarios. So, so they are optimized for this compared to the other ones. So why LTM and Arban IoT? So what's the benefits? So first of all, I want to highlight uh, energy consumption. So they are really great to save a lot of energy. They have different technologies and functions to do that. So if you have a battery-driven device, like a wearable, or maybe it's like a water meter that is, you, want, you don't want to change battery for like 10 years, then these technologies are really great. Second part is better coverage. These two technologies have mechanisms to, to have better coverage compared to normal cellular technologies. And that's really great, for example, if you have, let's say, a parking meter, in, in, in a garage in belief Earth, for example. Last and I guess quite important for you guys, it's cost efficient. So these devices are less complex than standard uh, devices. And, and they only have like one antenna, for example, and they're quite small, and, and they are cheaper. And that also makes it possible to scale so that you have thousands and thousands of devices. Uh, and also that's reflected on the network side. So these two technologies, they are what we're calling massive uh, IoT. So they can handle much more devices in the same cell compared to standard technologies. Uh, both these two technologies are standardized by 3DPP. And they're also supported by DSMA and they're part of the 5G family. So this makes it really future-proof. They will be here for a really long time. Digging in a little bit deeper and, and how it works. So let's start with battery life and increased coverage. So you have, I will mention three, but there are more uh, different features here. But um, regarding battery power, we have something we call power saving mode. So what that does is you have the possibility to put your device into deep sleep. It's still attached to the network. So it, it, when you turn it on again, it will directly be able to start communicating and not waste a lot of battery doing the registration. Uh, the next one is EDRX, uh, Extended Discontinuous Reception, is word. Uh, what that is, is more like a snooze button. So you can pause the receiving side in your device to save battery. This is a functionality that has ex existed for a long time in mobile phones as well, DRX, but there you only sleep for like 1.2 seconds. 
Now with extended DRX, you can do that for much longer time and save much more battery. Last one is long periodic tau. And tau, that's a uh, 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 tracking area update. So every device need to send to the network that here I am and I'm still alive. If it doesn't do that, the network will disconnect that device. Uh, now with long periodic tau, you can set that timer, how often you need to send that to much longer time, and that will also enhance your battery life. Regarding the coverage enhancement, these two technologies are also quite the same. Um, they're using repetition to be able to do this uh, better coverage and deep penetration. So it sends the same message more times if it's in a bad radio condition. Uh, but what you need to think about is that this will consume more battery. So if it sends the same message over and over and over, it's also going to use the radio and consume a lot of battery. So you need to, to balance those. Those two things were common in those two technologies, but now regarding throughput and latency, they differ quite a lot. Uh, so here's uh, a chart showing theoretical values. You all know that in real life, it's always depending on, on, on the coverage, etc. So it's not going to be lower. But to be able to compare these two technologies, uh, I think this is good. And, and you can also see that I added two, two columns per, per technique. And, and the reason is that 3D people, when they first released these two technologies, they had one uh, uh, setup of speeds. And later on, in the next release, they added enhanced versions that can manage higher speeds. But if we look at the values, uh, LTM, we're talking about one megabit per second, uplink and downlink. Uh, and narrow BioT, we're talking about 26 kilobit per second in downlink and 66 kilobit per second in uplink. This is theoretical values. But you, you see 26 kilobits per second compared to one megabit per second. So it's a huge difference here. And the same goes with the latency. LTM inherits the low latency that you have in LTE in general. So we're talking milliseconds, almost real time. It's not uh, as fast as the coming low latency in 5G, uh, the ultra low latency, as you say, but it's still really good. Um, Compared to narrowband IoT, where we're talking seconds, it's one and a half to ten seconds. You really need to consider this when you are looking at your use case. If you are aiming for a use case that are more or less real time, uh, maybe you will press a button and you want a door to be open. You don't want to wait 10, 15 seconds for the door to open. So then you need to have maybe LTM instead. Uh, regarding throughput, um, even though you have a device that do not need so high throughput, uh, you need to consider that you need to do firmware updates. Uh, and that's more or less mandatory nowadays. And, and why you need that is maybe you want to enhance your, your uh, equipment, or maybe you uh, have a security threat and then you need to do a firmware update. And it's always easier to do that with a higher throughput. Are your device going to be moving or is it static? So you need to think about that narrowband IT, it's made and designed for static scenarios. It can handle moving devices, it can re-register, but it's not meant to be that. So you lose some of the benefits of the technology. Uh, regarding LTM, uh, once again it inherits the standard LTE uh, handover functionality, so that could be handled really smooth. Voice and SMS. Um, Narrowband OT do not support voice, and LTM does. Um, but it does specific, um, the, the standardization say it does. You need to know that not all operators have turned this on yet. Uh, this will probably come, but right now that's not the case. SMS is quite the same. Uh, LTM, more or less all operators support uh, SMS, but almost no one supports SMS in narrowband IT. So, conclusion and recommendation. 
as you've heard, uh, we have a lot of different, there are a lot of uh, similarities and differences, and, and uh, they're both great on energy consumption and coverage, and you really need to think about your use case when you're selecting between those two. The last one, roaming, um, just to mention that a little bit short because we haven't talked about that, and that's, yes, there are a lot of operators around the world that have deployed either narrowband RT or LTM or both, um, but that's not the same as you have roaming. So if you're aiming for a global uh, the, um, deployment, uh, you have one SIM card that go into to different countries, uh, then LTM is going to be the one that has a faster rollout because it's much easier for operators to do the rollout in LTM compared to narrowband IT. So just to summarize this, uh, these two technologies, as said, they are 3GPP global standards, uh, and they are, um, yeah, they are future proof, and 5G, they are in the 5G family. So, if you are aiming for an LPVA, uh, low power wide area um, equipment, then these can be really great technologies to choose. Still, this is not a solution for all scenarios. So, of course, if you have a demand for high throughput, you need to look at that. Um, narrowband OT, if you have, you don't need low latency, you don't need high throughput, etc., etc., then narrowband IoT can be a really good match and, and really, really cost efficient. Still, you need to know that with LTM, you will have more flexibility for the future. So if you are going to grow and, and change your equipment, like um, Husqvarna, for example, um, then it's better off, you're better off with L LTM. So, okay, a lot of information in a short time frame, and I only scratched a little bit on this so, uh, subject. Uh, I can recommend that we have a white paper on the Telenor IoT webpage. So, if you want, go, down, uh, go there and, and read about it, or please contact us, and we're glad to discuss this. That's all. Thank you, Jonas, for clarifying the main differences between those two technologies. But I've actually read some statements in the media that there is a slightly difference in, in, in coverage, that narrowband has a better coverage, but is that a myth or what's your comment on that? Uh, it's a bit uh, actually hard to answer that because if you look at the standard, 3DPP actually say that narrowband IT is a better uh, technology regarding how to handle really bad uh, coverage situations. And there are some tests showing that, but it actually has appeared a lot of tests showing that they are exactly the same. So, so and I think it depends on the use case. If you have really low data throughput, etc., that fits uh, narrowband IoT really well, then that could be better. Uh, in, in deep coverage. But as soon as you send more data, uh, it could be instead LTM. Mm. Or uh, both are great regarding uh, coverage. Okay, so if you look in your crystal ball, will both of those technologies evolve within the same pace or will we see that some so technology so will beat questions. each other? <laughs> if you predict <laughs> from your perspective. Uh, that's really hard. I think actually because they are, they are aiming a little bit of different scenarios. Uh, and I think narrowband IT will be continue to grow, but more local uh, local setups. And I think that for for those that are looking for having a global uh, deployment in different countries, due to that, it's much easier to get roaming. I think that that will be the winner for the global deployments. Uh, and also, I think maybe that this that you're enhancing and you're Nowadays, we're always uh, we're iterating the development. We'll also make that you do want a technology that is more flexible. Okay. Thank you. Good answer. Thanks.